calling out the uh, the war in Gaza right now. Uh, that sign is gone now, and some people were at least taken into custody. Not sure uh, if they were indeed arrested as of yet. Uh, we want to get now to uh, to Christian Kaftan. Uh, he is over the Golden Gate. He just made it to the scene right by the toll plaza there. Christian, uh, man, it, it is a mess out there this morning, and you're, you're standing in front of vehicles. I guess those are work vehicles that are, that are blocking traffic, trying to contain the situation. What can you tell us about That's what's happening? That's right. We're on Doyle Drive as people are trying to uh, make their way over it. If you might have just caught me, uh, we're trying to uh, uh, gesture to one of the people who is trapped here. Uh, you can see, uh, if we turn to our right as we walk on over, you can see the line of cars here along Doyle Drive. And, you know, this is uh, people who have been stuck here, uh, in some cases, for hours. Hi, we talked to you a little earlier. Uh, just wanted to talk to you about your morning so far. You said that you'd been trying to come on over here. You'd been trying to make your way to work. And what happened as you tried to make your way to work? Uh, what happened now? No, earlier when you were trying to make your way, you said you were trying to come in at around 7 o'clock, right? And they stopped you? Yeah, from there. Maybe I'm on that area. Yeah, they, they stopped here. They, they told us that the left lane, you can go on the left lane, not on the right lane. That's why I go on the right lane. But all of a sudden, the, that car, uh, that truck, there, there's a barricade already. That's why we cannot go on, on Marin County. And it's important for you. You said you needed to get over there because you're a, a health care provider, right? So if you can't get to work, what happens? Uh, I don't know. I just uh, I just need to stay here so I can go over there in at Tiburon. To Tiburon. Okay. Well, good luck. And I know that you had to get Micah out of the car so that uh, Micah could take a little relief break. Uh, this is just one lady who is uh, stuck here in the traffic uh, that uh, 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 stopped traffic going along Doyle Drive. Uh, we can see certainly dozens of cars. Uh, as you said earlier, we just arrived on scene, so I don't know exactly how far back it goes. We also know that there was a, uh, a Golden Gate Transit bus that's down there as well. And uh, in the last, oh, 10, 15 minutes since we've been here, we saw uh, dozens of people come off of that bus and make their way over here to the uh, welcome station. People saying that they uh, need to relieve themselves. They've been stuck here for hours. People saying they need to stretch their legs for a little bit. Uh, the situation still unfolding here. As you can see, traffic is completely stopped in the north and southbound lanes. And uh, Joseph, if we can swing around. We're going to start walking over it this way. Uh, you referenced those vehicles there. You can see those vehicles from the Golden Gate Bridge Authority blocking any access uh, across the bridge. As we walk a little bit closer, uh, we're going to try to see if we can give you guys a shot so you can see that the pedestrian access on the bridge is also blocked. Ordinarily, under these circumstances, uh, you'd be able to walk on the right-hand side. That is the uh, eastern side of the span. Uh, that's what people do to uh, walk across the bridge and enjoy this uh, tourist attraction here that uh, is right here in our backyard. Right now, we are hearing that that access is blocked. And we've also heard that there is a bus uh, actually up on the bridge, perhaps preparing to take the protesters into custody or get them off of the bridge. Uh, at this point, we don't have a timeline. We don't know exactly when that's going to happen. Uh, we're waiting to get information from the Golden Gate Bridge Authority. We're waiting to get information from uh, California Highway Patrol to figure out just how long or if there is a time frame that has been established at this point. Uh, we're going to go ahead and give you one more live look. Uh, if you're familiar with the bridge, you know that as a suspension bridge, it bows just a little bit in the middle. And right over the bow, right over our sight line, that is where a lot of the protesters are. We can just see the very peak of a red light flashing in that area. That is where we believe a lot of the action is focused right now uh, with uh, CHP, uh, probably uh, uh, bridge authority uh, on uh, the span trying to uh, either clear those protesters, trying to get people uh, uh, out of the way and reopen the span. Again, at this point, we are still waiting for a timeline to figure out how long that's going to take, what that's going to look like. Right now, you can see we're standing right in the middle of the road. So clearly, 
No vehicles passing one way or the other for right now. We're live in San Francisco on the south end of the Golden Gate Bridge span. Uh, Christian Kafton, back to you. Christian, uh, we, we just checked, by the way, we, we, we tried to contact or we did contact the Golden Gate Bridge Authority. They, they referred everything over to, to CHP at this point, as you might imagine, because they're in the thick of it right now. And as for uh, taking the people who are taken into custody away, I can tell you I saw one of the, the vans there that uh, pe police used to, to load people in there uh, on the bridge right now. But we, we, from what I understand here, the traffic on heading from northbound, southbound on the bridge that hadn't made it over the bridge yet, backed up uh, past Sausalito area. Is the traffic that bad on, on, on the other end where you are now as well? Well, so we are on the south end of the span, and this is what I was showing you earlier. You can see uh, the traffic here backed up along Doyle Drive as it approaches, and it looks like there's actually a white vehicle that's trying to turn around on the bridge or on the approach to the bridge you can see oh, yeah. perhaps mm -hmm. yeah. some of those vehicles are turning around and going the wrong way down it looks like there's somebody in uh, a uniform or in uh, 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 a bright fluorescent vest perhaps directing that traffic uh, again since this is a very dynamic situation we can't be uh, here and there at the same time so we don't know exactly what's going on I can just describe what I'm seeing and we do see that person in a fluorescent jacket fluorescent vest we have seen uh, it looked like two or three vehicles there's another one right now that appears to be turning around uh, perhaps to go the wrong way down Doyle Drive just to get some of the vehicles uh, off of the approach to the bridge and that should give you a, a sense of uh, just how many vehicles are up here from our position now we can see uh, about oh two dozen vehicles uh, presumably it goes on beyond the turn there and you can see that bus down there that uh, we told you about earlier where some uh, passengers got off earlier uh, so uh, hoping that some of these people can leave this area the woman that we talked to earlier live just a moment ago told me uh, that she is a home health care provider and she says that she needs to uh, stay here because her patient needs her in Tiburon. So she says that uh, if she turns around and goes home, her patient will have nobody to care for him. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why she is staying here. We talked with another woman who told us uh, that while she may sympathize with the message that the protesters have, she said she believes that this tactic of blocking the bridge, blocking roads around the Bay Area, blocking roads across the country, can actually do the exact opposite and make people uh, angry and blame them and turn them from being perhaps sympathetic to their cause to being antagonistic towards their cause. Christian, we did, while you were just talking to us, see a couple of cars driving in the southbound lanes behind you. Were they emergency type vehicles? Did they look like regular vehicles? On the other side, uh, Joseph, on the other side of the, the, fr the freeway, in the southbound direction, we saw a couple of cars driving right behind Christian, not in the uh, northbound direction, which you're showing us, but across the barricade right. in the southbound direction. Right. So those vehicles in the southbound direction, I, I don't know what those vehicles were. They, they weren't vehicles coming across the span, but there are some vehicles that are able to come out of the Presidio. You can see uh, that the Presidio is right over here, and you can see that there are some vehicles that are kind of making their way through. Now, this isn't a vehicle, this Prius that's going Got along it. here yeah. is not a vehicle that came across the span. It's just coming through the Presidio. So you might see a few vehicles kind of making their way through like that. Uh, they're not emergency vehicles. They're people who are uh, either leaving the Presidio, people who are perhaps hoping to kind of find their way over to the bridge. In fact, that's how Joseph and I made our way here through that exact path through the Presidio. Okay, hold on just a moment. There's people the, shouting. the person, yeah, this person here is telling people uh, to get back in their vehicles, and he's actually sending those vehicles back down. Uh, Doyle Drive. So this is what we were talking about before and we're starting to get some confirmation that in fact they are turning vehicles around here uh, on the approach to the Golden Gate. Uh, an indication that they don't believe uh, that this is going to be cleared anytime soon. So uh, as we look at the scene we're going to make our way down a little bit closer to see if we can try to capture a little bit more of that action. But this does appear that they're now going to start turning these vehicles around rather than waiting for the bridge to clear going north. Uh, that, uh, that bus that we were showing you earlier, that bus has now turned around and you can see even in the time that uh, we have 
been here that the number of vehicles has thinned considerably. So uh, it looks like uh, this is, uh, I'm not sure if he's CHP or if he's with Bridge Authority, um, but is uh, somebody uh, directing traffic and starting to turn some of these vehicles around. Someone in an official capacity is directing traffic, and so he's directing people to go uh, essentially the wrong way to get out of that uh, place where they've been stuck on Doyle Drive. That's, I guess, Christian, that's a sign that we shouldn't expect the, Bay, the Golden Gate Bridge, rather, to open anytime soon <laughs> if this is their plan B that they're yeah, now. Yeah, exactly right. That's a that's a good read. This this uh, this gentleman in the fluorescent jacket is uh, asking people if they want to stay here on the bridge approach. If they want to stay here, he's letting them stay, but he's also allowing people to turn around. This is one of the complaints that we'd heard from a couple of the people who were out here earlier. Um, they'd said, "Hey, I wish they would just turn us around and let us go because I don't want to be stuck here." We talked to some people who've been stuck here for hours, and they said, "I wish they would just turn us around and let us go." Uh, we're going to see if there's a possibility. Uh, sir, don't know if you feel comfortable. We'd love to talk to you just about what you've been through this morning. Do you have 30 seconds to talk with us? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. So uh, what's your story? How, how long have you been out here and were you trying to drive? I've been watching you live right now on my phone. <laughs> Christian, how you doing? <laughs> Good to see you. I wish uh, I was under thanks. better circumstances. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's an unfortunate situation, a sensitive situation, as we all know. I've, I've been here since 8 o'clock, so stuck with everyone else here. It's unfortunate, but uh, not much else uh, we can do. Yeah, so you just have an alternate route to get home. So I do have an escape, uh, but I think I'll just wait it out for now. And you're trying to make your way home. So that's one of the yeah. reasons why I heard the, the guy from the Presidio Trust saying, hey, do you want to stay here or do you want to turn around? For you, turning around doesn't make sense because you need to get home. Well, it does. I could always take the Richmond San Rafael. Uh, it's, it's an alternate route I can't take. So I'm glad they are giving us the option of turning around and getting out of here. That is good. I've seen also that they have a Highway 880 cleared already, and they had more protesters over there. So from what I've seen from your guys' footage and the helicopter, it looks like there's only about maybe a dozen protesters, if that, and there's just a standoff. So hopefully uh, it just gets resolved, you know. Let's hope so. I'm going to wish you good luck. What's hey, your name? Thank you. Nick. Nick? What's your last name, Nick? Uh, I, you Nick, prefer not to say? Yeah, Nick, you got it, man. Right. Thank you again for yeah. talking with right, us. Good luck guys. and be safe, okay? I right, appreciate you. So there you go. Uh, Nick telling us he's been here since uh, 8 o'clock, uh, stuck here. And like you've heard, some of the folks stuck going north. He needs to make his way home. It doesn't necessarily make sense for him to turn around. Right. Uh, we talked again to that home health care worker who said that she was trying to get over to Tiburon because she needed to get over there to see a patient. So a lot of a lot of stories like that going on out here, guys. Well, he is the definition of taking it in stride. He certainly yeah. is. <laughs> wow. We all have the patience of that gentleman. Yeah. It was good to hear from him directly. Christian Kafton, thank you so much. Christian's been there at the Golden Gate Bridge. The situation at the Golden Gate Bridge is kind of the third of three that popped up this morning, but even that's been ongoing for at least a couple of hours now. Live pictures up above here. If we could swing back to uh, kind of the start place, which is 880 in Oakland. Our Amanda Quintana has been there since the six o'clock hour. So Amanda, five plus hours now you've been at the scene. You've been able to talk to more people where you are. Bring us that part of the story. Yeah, so still very slow moving here. There's only one lane open, that same lane that has been open. But um, I remember Andre asked earlier, he asked what, what's happening to the protesters once they are removed from the big oil barrels and the chains are removed. Well, we thought that they had left. We thought they were put in a van, but it seems like they are standing um, right at the edge of the freeway there. You could see uh, one of the protesters in that red kind of sweatshirt with the scarf. Um, we've kind of been watching. There's two other protesters that have been removed from those barrels, and they're sitting. Um, so it's hard to see them, but they're sitting there as well. And uh, so the, these people have not been arrested. They're not in handcuffs. You can see this person has one of their arms up. They're not in handcuffs. Uh, so we are watching as they work on the fourth protester now, and it's kind of the same situation, you know. Uh, police are getting used to this. They're used to kind of bringing in the saw first to get through one piece and then the jackhammer to get through the concrete. And, you know, it's this thing that they've already done three times. So now they're working on the fourth protester that is sitting there. And we're starting to see more people uh, kind of congregate along the side of the freeway here to either support or just to kind of see what's happening and take photos. Uh, so I did talk to a man that saw that this was happening on social media and then came to bring 
the Palestinian flag and hang it here on the side of the freeway. Let's hear from him. Well, there's a genocide going on halfway across the world, and people have to be informed about it. Whether it's going to work, whether it's on social media, people need to stay informed of what's going on. Babies are dying. So it looks like they are still working on that fourth person. Uh, they might be moving those three protesters that have already uh, been removed from those barrels. But again, it, we've been here a long time, and a lot of the people that were sitting in their car for almost three hours had been there for a long time. But people are able to move through in that one lane right now. Um, I spoke to a woman that, uh, you know, was sitting there for a little while and she said as she drove by, she was kind of confused about what was happening. You don't you don't see signs from the protesters. You don't see much. So uh, she had kind of come over here to the side to ask us and to get some more information about what actually caused the backup. Uh, so it is still hard to see that this is a protest from the side or even if you're driving right by them. Again, this will stay here for a while because they've only gotten three of the six protesters out so far. I'll send it back to you in the studio. Thank you so much for that report. Uh, we did get an update uh, from uh, the Port of Oakland because obviously that this is meant to affect that. Uh, and uh, at this point, uh, they say it's too early to tell what the economic impacts uh, might be. Uh, they do say their marine terminals have closed for the day and the situation is dynamic and it is evolving. That coming from a representative from the Port of Oakland when we contacted them to see how the situation is unfolding there uh, since that is one of the intended targets, obviously, of this economic blockade uh, being brought by this uh, A-15 group that, that, that's part of this here. And we also saw in Tom Baker's live shot, there was a, a crowd there earlier. It had been thinning, so let's check in with Tom now. Uh, where that third protest over on 7th Avenue and 880 uh, popped up a short time ago. Tom, take it away. Well, it's uh, smaller than it was before, but uh, the fact is a lot of people are up on the freeway. So basically what's happening is some people come down, some people go up, but it is a little bit smaller than it was. Now, I have with me Bill Abudi, who is the president of AB Trucking, one of the trucking companies at the port. He's been there for a long, long time. And Bill, my first question to you is, inside of the port because your your facility is inside the port what's the situation exactly um, all the terminals decided to go ahead and honor the uh, the protest and they closed down and so we encouraged them to do that and they followed up with it what does that mean in practical terms of the movement of goods uh, everything is dead stop right now the only thing that's moving is truckers that have containers in their yard and they're making their final deliveries but 99% uh, of the traffic inside the port is dead stop. Now the other thing you raised a really interesting point is that there's a lot of support for what's going on here. Give me a sense of who the truckers are and why that's so important. Well, we have 32 different languages spoken here at the port, so it's all minorities, immigrants, uh, that uh, support the Palestinian cause and they want this to stop. Um, behind us, you see a lot of them are white, probably Jewish, that are supporting this also. So there's massive support for the stopping of the war uh, in Gaza, in the West Bank, and Iran now. Given the fact that the port is somewhat of a political hot you know, a hot plug for just about anything. Is it something that the port just has to absorb into the daily business of what it does, or is it something that really is disruptive, or is this a, a single day like this just something you learn to uh, expect and uh, deal with? Well, over the years, I've been here for 35 years, it happens every once in a while, and for a good cause, uh, just like South Af Africa's apartheid, that was a great cause, it changed things. That's what these people are trying to do. That's what we support. And if we have to take one day pay cut, so be it. Uh, there's a lot of people getting killed. And that's the focus needs to be away from blocking the freeway, disrupting the economy, even though that's happening. But think of the human beings that are being killed every single day because we will not sit down at the negotiating table and resolve it politically. Well, and it, and it clearly sounds like, obviously, you have strong feelings about this because your family's uh, from, uh, you know, your, your long-term family's from overseas. I'm a first-generation immigrant. I am a Palestinian-American. Um, I've served here in the military, so I'm on both sides. Uh, but definitely the right thing needs to happen 
and uh, we need to stop this war. Well, that's Bill Abudi, the president of AB Trucking, uh, a big trucking firm that uh, we rely on for information all the time on all the issues that go on at the port. And that is the situation here where, again, uh, it's slower and less, uh, uh, you know, less voluminous than it was before. But the fact is a lot of the folks that were on that line are not up on that freeway. And because they're up on that freeway, that freeway remains shut down because even if they were to open this up, uh, they wouldn't get anywhere very far because the police would stop it. That's the situation. And also interesting to point out that right now there is not a police car around here. This thing has gone so well that nobody's really getting serious about trying to do anything about removing them because at this point in time there's not real confrontation going on. That is the situation from uh, the 7th Street uh, uh, entrance to uh, 880 South, and we'll go back to you now. Yeah, Tom, uh, he, he provides an interesting perspective here as, as a first-generation immigrant. Um, we live in, a, in an area that is very dynamic, right? People from all different cultures and nations have settled here uh, in the Bay Area. Uh, so it, it, it's more complex than one side or the other, isn't it? And I, it sounds like that man really exemplifies the complexity of what is happening before us, these protests, people that might not agree with right. them because they're blocking traffic. Talk a little bit about that. Well, I mean, when you see the kind of uh, spread of people that are against what's going on, it's a situation that just has to get settled because this is just a slaughter now. And uh, and it's a slaughter, you know, that began it. It's a slaughter that's going on now. And one of the things that happens is that you do really get people concerned. And, uh, you know, obviously both uh, the uh, folks here locally, but all folks across the country and certainly government is starting to understand this and pushing for the settlement, which is the best thing to do because that stops the killing. And once you stop the killing, you could start real talking. Uh, but obviously, uh, right now, the Port of Oakland things are uh, setting at zero because there's just no container movement whatsoever. Back to you. All right, let's bring things back to where you are real quick before we jump over to Amanda at 880. The couple of police cars that we saw in your life picture just off to the side, they're no longer there. And it sounds like the people who've no left longer. that protest line left of their own accord. Absolutely. Uh, so a number of people, as we were coming over here, but a number of people have walked away and they walk up towards uh, the West Oakland Barton where the big post office is and there are some places to eat and things like that there. But that's really heading towards downtown Oakland and uh, nobody's going this way because this is just more into the port. Uh, but kind of through the port more than anything else. So that's the situation. And um, because of that, uh, what we see is uh, a relatively smaller number of people. As I said, it, when we started here, there were 30 people and 20 bikes. There are probably 20 bikes still, but there aren't 30 people there. And the reason for that is, is that some, uh, some people went up on the freeway, other people walked away. And again, uh, because it was mentioned earlier, that this is a coalition of groups. It's not one solid group on one solid issue. They are all in support of a general issue of pe peace in Palestine. But uh, they have different agendas and all that. And you would expect people at some point in time to say, I've done my bit and I'm going. So that's the situation for sure. Other than that, we will stand by, see what's going on. We'll be back uh, for the noon news. And then uh, we'll see how long this lasts. Otherwise, we'll move on to other things. Back to you. Okay, we are, of course, clearly extending our coverage well past mornings on two to bring you this continuing developing what used to be breaking news here, but it's still very much the case. People in Oakland have been stuck on 880 for hours here as protesters have blocked off most lanes in the northbound direction. We do see some traffic getting through. Uh, if you work maybe several miles south of where that live picture is, Amanda Quintana has been sort of at the heat of where it's all been happening. Uh, share with us the location, uh, what's happening where you are, and an update. Right, so this is just before the Embarcadero exit that these protesters are still there. Uh, there are three protesters that are still on the freeway, uh, still attached to those barrels. And if, if you're just joining us, they've been attached, uh, you know, right arm in one barrel, left arm in one barrel. These large oil barrels uh, that seem to be filled with some kind of concrete or something uh, that is requiring a jackhammer from police to get through. So we've been watching, you know, uh, this these layers that police have to get through. They'll come in with the saw first. Um, you'll kind of see sparks. Uh, they'll come in with the jackhammer next. Uh, this whole time using kind of a tarp or uh, like a blanket to cover 
the face of the protester so that they're not getting hit by these sparks. Uh, again, three people have been taken out of those barrels. They've been removed. Uh, we thought that they were taken away from the scene, but it seems like uh, police have them in one area that they're just standing or sitting over there.